Hey guys, welcome back to the game room. Today we're taking a look at one of the two new expansions for Warhammer Discord's Legions of Darkness. Legions of Darkness introduces three new factions for the evil side, Vampire Counts, Skaven, and Dark Elves, as well as discs for the Orcs and Goblins and Chaos from the starter set. It also includes some new uh, deployment cards, it includes some new terrain, uh, so, some new cards specific for these factions, as well as some new cards for, specific for just the older evil factions like Orcs and Goblins and Chaos. Uh, let me take you through some of the components, I'll show you some of the new abilities that you get in this expansion, and uh, just show you how each of the new units works. Uh, let's take a look. So here are the contents of the Legion of Darkness box. We have the Skaven here, uh, the Dark Elves, and these are all vampire counts. Uh, you have some new tokens uh, over here, and we have new cards and a new piece of terrain. Uh, before we get into the cool discs, the main show, let's look at all the other stuff first, just to get an idea. Uh, so we have here a new piece of terrain. This is the Garden of Moor, which is kind of like a graveyard in Warhammer. And on the other side, it has a little uh, village on it, a little farmstead. Uh, so that card, the associated card, is here. Uh, the Garden of Moor is rough. And any Vampire Count disc overlapping this train gains Reanimate 1. We'll go into Reanimate in a moment. But essentially it's kind of like a uh, watchtower or something like that. It's, it, it gives you something when you're overlapping it. Uh, the Farmstead grants cover, and discs overlapping this terrain gain Stalwart. Stalwart we won't really go into as much in this expansion, uh, but stay tuned at the end. There's going to be a link for the Hammer and Hold expansion where I'll explain that ability, because it's, it's a little bit more in uh, that expansion than this one. Uh, but that, again, just another two-sided piece of terrain. I like the fact that it's included in the set uh, because, you know, adding more terrain is always good. It's going to be good for any game uh, to have more terrain. Uh, we have some new stratagems, uh, where we have a new uh, one of these cards. This, the equivalent of this was the Watchtower card in the original game. required two Watchtowers. Uh, this is just called Stratagems. Uh, each army gains one additional command card. And it has it's like a new scenario, essentially. Uh, so that's cool to have. Uh, we have a new uh, objective card. Fearless, each player gains immune fear, or heroes gain, each hero gains immune fear. Uh, fear is one we will be talking about in a moment. Uh, or as an objective, you score one victory point for each enemy casualty. So that's a pretty cool one. I like that. And here are all the new cards for each of the new armies. So we have more cards here for vampires. I believe it's five or six. Uh, five here for the vampires, because they are the main army. Uh, there are more of them. So there's more faction-specific ones. So you have Invocation of Nehek. Uh, one Vampire Caster uh, disc activates with this command, gains Reanimate 1. Uh, and while we'll explain in a minute, Reanimate 1 sounds kind of like what it is. You're going to be reanimating discs. Uh, Gaze of Nagash, uh, this is a Vampire Caster, deal 1 magic damage to target non-hero disc within medium range. If that disc is not activated, place an activation on it. That's a really cool one. Uh, we have, a, this is where these tokens come to play, we have Beguile, which uses this one. Uh, the Vampire Caster, target disc within short range, cannot deal damage to a defender, or as a defender, until the end of the round. Uh, so that's a really unique ability, which I haven't seen yet. And uh, this one will kind of interact a little bit more with the uh, with the Hammer and Hold expansion, because there are some abilities that the defenders get uh, in, that, in that expansion, being dwarves. Uh, Dark Majesty, uh, a Vampire Caster, this, can't, this disc cannot be flipped onto by an enemy until the end of the round. Uh, so that would be this token, actually, no, sorry, geez, this token, sorry. And uh, uh, essentially this prevents you from being flipped onto it all. So this is kind of like protection spells for your casters. And we have Raise Dead. Uh, Vampire Caster plays a small or medium undead ally from the casualty pile onto the battlefield completely within short range. Then place an activation and uh, one of these tokens on it. So this is a little bit different. Uh, I guess now is a good time to go into what Reanimate is. There's two, three different versions of Reanimate. Uh, really, the only ones that have it right now are Reanimate One and Two. But the number associated with Reanimate uh, is associated with the size of the disc. Reanimate One means you can reanimate target undead single or small uh, disc, and Two is a medium disc. Uh, three is a large disc, but I I don't think we have anything yet that has Reanimate Three yet. Uh, so. When they're reanimated, they get one of these little tokens on them. And uh, when you get this token, essentially you're, you're alive for a turn and then you die. Uh, so, essentially when you reanimate something, uh, it has one turn to kind of do what it's going to do. And then it's going to go away. With Raised Dead, it's a little bit different. Uh, because when you reanimate, you can't actually reanimate onto someone. Or, uh, Raised Dead lets you reanimate within, within range of you. And then... Uh, you gain an activation, but it, it says it's placed. It doesn't. It, it's not the same as reanimate, where you just pull it up and you have to put it next to it and then move. 
Uh, so you get to place it on top of something if you really want to. Uh, but that's a pretty cool effect. Then we have a couple that are specific to factions. We have the Vermintide, which is uh, Skaven specific. Uh, Skaven caster or priest. Roll a d6 twice. Deal physical damage equal to the lower result to each other disc within short range. So it's kind of like a, a little burst spell or an area of effect spell. Uh, one thing that's really interesting in this is this says caster or priest. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is when we go through the heroes, there isn't an actual priest yet, so that indicates that we're going to get some future Skaven stuff, which is cool. I mean, you expect it anyway, but it's nice to get reinforced in the card itself. Uh, we have Cloaked in Darkness, a Dark Elf one. Uh, ally, Dark Elf, Disgain, Immune. Uh, I believe that's physical. Uh, oh no, Immune to Range, excuse me. A uh, little error. I haven't, I haven't actually used this card specifically yet. Uh, but yeah, that's a really cool ability. Essentially, you're going to be stealthy, and that's going to help a lot against those high elf uh, matches that you have to play against. Uh, and these these last few are going to be either older factions or just generally destruction. Uh, destruction being the evil factions. Uh, Acquiescence, which is for the chaos, a chaos caster. Treat target disc within medium range as having blank text box. So uh, you get this token. Essentially, you lose all your abilities, which is really strong. That's tough. Uh, and you got Brain Burst, uh, which is finally getting some more of the orc spells. They have some of the best names in the game. Uh, it's unstable. Uh, orc caster, deal D6 minus 1 physical or magic to target enemy caster, character, hero, priest, or runesmith within long range. So this thing can hit pretty much anything, but it is unstable like most orc magic. And Proven Champion, this is for destruction, this is for any of the destruction. Uh, destruction only hero, this uh, disc gains fear until the end of the round. Uh, fear is interesting. Fear is actually kind of, it's kind of similar in the in the miniature game as it is in this. Uh, in the miniatures game, fear essentially makes your weapon skill go down to one. You, you become very poor with weapons. Uh, in this game, uh, it essentially it makes your guys weaker in battle. So while something with fear is pinning an enemy, the pin disc's counterattack strength, the white strength at the top, is treated as one. So it's harder for something that it is is pinned. If you have fear, the thing that you're pinning is going to strike back weaker. It's going to be scared of you. So I really like that effect. There are a couple other effects in the game uh, that are introduced in the expansion. Uh, one of them I already talked about, Reanimate. Uh, that's, that, that's one of the new ones. Uh, we also have Stealth. Uh, it's uh, this, with this, that with Stealth is always treated as if it's overlapping terrain as cover. Uh, so uh, that will, that, I believe that comes up on the Dark Elves more. Uh, Stalwart, which I guess we'll talk about now, it is officially introduced in this expansion. Uh, Stalwart is a disc with Stalwart can activate to use its range attack or focus ability while pinned. So uh, it's going to be more in Hammer and Hold, but uh, you saw the card that got kind of got rid of it. But uh, Stalwart essentially lets you do stuff while pinned, which is a really, really strong ability. And the other one that's going to be introduced is by these green tokens here, and that is Poison. Uh, poison is when a disc with poison deals damage in melee combat or with a ranged attack. So if one of your guys has poison and deals damage, place a poison token on the disc, it damages. So it's kind of like in addition to the damage. Uh, when damage tokens would be removed from a disc with poison token, remove one damage to or one poison token instead. Uh, if a disc takes a wound, remove all the poison and damage. But So wounds work the same. But that sounds kind of weird when you say it. But uh, to explain, let's say we have... Uh, our hero out here and they take a bunch of damage and they also take one poison token uh, Normally at the end of the round all your damage clears if you haven't been dealt a wound uh, And let's say Isabel's been dealt two damage and hasn't been dealt a wound Instead of taking that two damage off you would only remove the poison token So what poison does essentially makes damage stick an extra round and that is really really strong and really really annoying If you're having to play against it a lot uh, so that's that's something to keep in mind. Those are all the new abilities. We have one last card here, which is a new deployment card called All In. Uh, discs cannot be reinforced in this zone, but it does have a 6 value. So you usually won't have to reinforce stuff into that zone in the first place. So uh, let's take a look at the discs. I mean, that's the big big attraction here. We're going to look at the smaller ones first, the smaller expansions here, or smaller uh, factions. Uh, each of these small, uh, small factions has uh, one hero, uh, one kind of generic unit, kind of like the standard unit, and one more, a little more specialized unit. Uh, the Dark Elves hero is Lorthir, Fel yeah, Lorthir Felhart. I'm never going to pronounce some of these names right, sorry guys. Uh, he's a hero, he has Fear and Frenzy. Uh, frenzy being, if he's over more than one disc, he does damage to each of them. Uh, while this disc is on the battlefield, Corsair's disc in your, in your reserve can flank. So they can kind of surprise guys. He's a... Uh, he's got a fast movement of 5, he's got a strong strength of 6, a good counterattack strength, uh, 
pretty pretty standard looking guy. Uh, power. Uh, he can do you do a unit of thirty three points. Uh, so he's pretty strong, I'd say. Uh, Blackheart Corsairs are infantry, missile, mobile, and stealth. So this is where that stealth ability comes in. Uh, so they're mobile and missile units. They only have a short range of one die, and it's two damage. But it's still it's mobile, so they're going to be able to get a shot off before then. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, they're they're pretty strong. They're, the Dark Elves are more offensively strong than they are defensively. They only have two counterattack strengths, so they want to be the ones pinning something. Uh, which is very similar to the actual Dark Elves in the game. They're very strong hitting. They just don't want to get hit, essentially. Uh, and then we have uh, three of those. Uh, the, the way the uh, breakdown of discs in this game is going to be in this expansion, it's, there's always going to be three of every small disc, unless they're a hero, and uh, two of every medium disc, and one of every large. Uh, so we have uh, the Karan Kar Harpies. So Harpies are pretty cool. They have their flying monsters, and discs engage with this disc game slow, uh, attack and counterattack. So these things again are very annoying. They're not the strongest. They're only three attack, three counterattack, three uh, toughness. But they only cost seven, and they can get in there and just muck up a scrum. They can go in there, land on top of a few discs, and suddenly they're all slow and they're attacking last, and they're they're in a rough pot, spot. So I'd say Dark Elves right now, although they're you know there's not a ton of a ton of units here, they could be a really cool support unit there. Uh, more, like I said, more offensively capable, but the Harpies are really annoying, and the Corsairs can hit really hard. So, And they can also sneak up on you, because they, they can use stealth, they can have the card that gives them uh, immunity to range attacks, things like that. So they can get up on you pretty quickly. The Skaven have Ikit Claw. He's their hero. Uh, again, he's fairly standard, a 5-4 attack and, and counterattack. Uh, you have uh, Hero, Caster, Magic 3. This disc can use magic to target an enemy within long range. Now, magic is normally limited to medium range, so long range magic is really, really strong because magic is going to be automatic damage. Uh, so this guy is really powerful. He's not uh, the strongest. He's not the worst, though. He's got five toughness, so he, he uh, you got to keep him safe, though. This is going to be one of the ones he's going to be very strong, I think, uh, even in long term when we get more Skaven. Uh, but right now, long range magic, that's going to be really useful to have. The basic units we have, oddly enough, aren't clan rats. If you play Warhammer, clan rats are kind of like the basic uh, Skaven unit. They're just they're they're the expendable units that go out there and go out and die in mass. But gutter runners are kind of like uh, Skaven assassins. They're like Ratman assassins. Uh, have a long move of six. They're infantry, mobile, or excuse me, infantry, missile, scout, and stealth. They don't have mobile, but they do have a medium range attack of two dice, uh, and they each, they each do two physical damage. So. Uh, pretty standard range attacker. I do like that they have stealth. That's a cool addition to them. And they do have scout, which is also really cool. So these guys are going to get up there and annoy you pretty quickly. Probably won't be able to take too much of a hit. This is one of my favorite uh, things in the game. While I do play uh, Vampire Counts in the miniatures game now, I used to, when I very, very first started back in the 90s, I played Skaven, and the Rattling Gun had just come out, and it was like my favorite thing in the world because it was so random. You just keep rolling dice, and it's kind of like that here. Uh, it has a movement of three, so it doesn't move very fast. It's two and two, so again, not very strong as far as attack and defense go, uh, or attack and counterattack. It is missile and mobile, though, so it can move and shoot. And it has a medium three dice attack. Uh, each dice does two physical damage, and physical damage uh, deal two physical damage to each disc you uh, resolve a scatter or a yeah a scatter result against instead of re-rolling it. So normally, when you roll the little arrow, uh, let me find the dice here. Here we go. That little arrow on the dice there. Normally, when you roll that, you have to roll against the most the other uh, nearby units uh, to determine if you're going to hit them. So it's kind of like scattering. You're you're off target a little bit, but you're hitting something. Now instead of that, those just count as hits against other units. So you're kind of just spray and pray. These things are really hilarious. Uh, I really like the Skaven. I I like Dark Elves, but Skaven I have a personal attachment to, and I think that these are this is boding well. I like that they didn't just use clan rats. They have some of the cooler units. You get you get the ninja the gutter runners. You get the really cool uh, Gatling gun. You get the uh, a, a and warlock engineer. Warlock engineers are some of my favorite units. Period. So uh, really good choices. Uh, Ikit Claw is a really cool guy. Those are both winners, even if they're not that many discs for them. Uh, and over here we have the cream of the, cream of the crop. Uh, the vampire counts. Actually, before we get to the vampire counts, let me cut real quick. I forgot to include the uh, new Orcs and Goblins, new Chaos Discs. So let me pull those in right now. 
And we're back. Sorry about that. I can't believe I left these out. There are some of the cooler ones in there. Uh, so we have uh, we have Orcs and Goblins here, and we have Chaos. So Orcs and Goblins have a little bit of a bigger stack, but I'll explain that in a sec. So we have we have Night Goblins. Uh, Night Goblins are kind of the staple goblins in Orcs and Goblins nowadays. Uh, they have five movement, they're infantry, and while within short range of at least one other Orcs and Goblins disc, this disc gains one attack and one counterattack. So that'll put it up to a four and a three, which is really good for four points. It's a really cheap unit that gets better uh, if they're in range of other guys. So uh, kind of the old horde mode, essentially, for Orcs, uh, which is really cool. They are really weak, though, so they'll die. But again, four points, you can't really ask for much more. And this is one of the coolest war machines in Warhammer, uh, the Doom Diver Catapult. It's uh, you you use an activation to reinforce one Goblin Doom Diver within medium range. What's a Doom Diver? That is this, uh, the Goblin Doom Diver. It's a zero zero, which obviously isn't going to do anything. But the dis this disc cannot be deployed and can only be reinforced by a Doom Diver Catapult. This disc gains a wound when it deals impact damage. Now it is flying and impact five. So this thing, it moves five, it comes into play, it doesn't have an activation token on. So essentially when you activate the Doom Diver, you place this out within medium range, and then it can do a, it can do a fly action, fly over everything, hit a disc, and it does five damage immediately. So it's kind of like it's a suicide bomber. It just goes out there, hits something really hard, dies, that's it. But it's it's awesome, it's so cool. I love the fact that this thing just shoots out stuff. The Doom Diver is only five points, but each of these discs is four points. So that's something to keep in mind as far as like scoring points, scoring units, things like that. Uh, but that is really cool. I love those. Those are very thematic. Uh, over here on the Chaos side, we have Demonettes. These are infantry, demonic, and they have swift attack. Uh, four attack strength, two counter attack strength. It's kind of reminiscent of the Dark Elves. They're very, they're very like more attacky than defensive. But they move six, so these things move quick. They're going to be getting across the battlefield. Only six points. Always useful to have cheap uh, infantry in the game. And then we have two of the Screamers. Screamers are 3-2, so not very strong attack, counterattack. They are tougher, though, five wounds, or five uh, toughness. Uh, but they also have Demonic, Fear, and Flying. So they're going to be getting into combat, hopefully not getting hit very hard back, and uh, annoying people, pretty much. Again, a fairly cheap unit at seven, so not too bad. So now we get into the Cream of the Crop, which is the Vampire Council. The one you obviously see there's more discs for. It's the focus of the expansion. Uh, there's enough in here for, th this is even more than the equivalent of what the base starter set armies are, essentially. Uh, so we have three uh, new heroes. We have Isabella Von Karstein. Uh, she's a hero, caster, magic two, mobile. And she can uh, activate to re or remove one wound from this disc. So she can heal herself. She's, she's pretty strong on attack, five attack, four counter attack, and four, four toughness. Uh, very strong in in combat, which is pretty cool. I'll, I've always liked that they've that the vampire counts have made uh, female characters extremely strong. Uh, I've almost always ran female vampires as my own heroes in the real game, so I really like running her quite a bit. Uh, we have Heinrich Krimler, or excuse me, Heinrich Kimmler. Uh, he's a necromancer. He's not a vampire. Uh, he's a hero caster, magic three, reanimate one, and this disc can use reanimate to reinforce up to three skeleton discs. So we have skeleton warriors, kind of like the basic unit in the in the in this expansion. Uh, so he can actually reanimate more. He's not the toughest though. He's only three attack strength, three defense, kind of like a lot of the other casters. Uh, one thing you are going to notice though, a lot of the other casters, like uh, in most factions, are weak. Vampires are usually really strong. Five attack, four defense. They're kind of more chaosy casters. Uh, so you have over here Manfred von Karstein, and he is just kind of a beast. He's a hero, caster, magic three, reanimate two. So he has a stronger reanimation. He's got strong magic. He's got five attack, four defense. He's he's essentially a, a knight, which is really cool. He's a knight that can cast spells. Uh, he does have he has a more restrictive uh, supporting cost. He has th 31, so it's going to be a little tighter on points, but he's very strong. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the basic units here as far as the other discs go. Uh, we have Skeleton Warriors, which are pretty standard. They're only four points, though, but they're three attack, three counterattack, uh, move four. Infantry, undead, but they are slow to counterattack. So uh, they aren't the best. They're only four points, and they, uh, as you can tell from the other reanimation, you can bring them back, depending on what cast you have. we got three of those. Uh, the Tomb Manchi, uh, two, two, so not very strong, uh, but it's monster, undead, mobile, and resistant to physical. So it's kind of like a ghost. Uh, you can activate to deal D6 minus two physical to each uh, non-vampire disc within short range. So it's got another area of effect type spell, uh, or not spell, attack. Uh, it costs seven. Uh, Banshees are cool. It's very thematic. You, they essentially go through anything. So I really like that it's kind of like just a boom burst spell out there. Uh, you have your own, uh, uh, you have an aspiring necromancer, so kind of a weaker necromancer. 
Only three attack, two counter attack. And he does move five, which is good. He's also a caster, magic two, and reanimate one. So he's kind of like your supporting caster. He'd go good with uh, Kimler getting more and more skeletons out there. Uh, part of the vampire count strategy is just throw bodies at it. They're not the best all the time, but you just keep throwing bodies at it, and eventually they're going to die. Uh, Graveguard, they're 4-4, four, four, so they're stronger skeletons. They are infantry undead. Uh, while engaged with a small disc, this ga uh, this disc gains plus one attack and plus one counterattack. So they're usually going to be 5-5 five, five if you use them correctly. And they're 5 toughness. They're a little more expensive, but Graveguard's in the adventure game, one of my favorite units. In the Discord game, again, one of my favorites. Uh, dire Wolves, very fast at 6. They cost 6 points. They're Monster, Undead, Impact 1, and 3 Attack, 3, three Counter Attack, and 3 Wounds. Uh, dire Wolves are a little tougher to use. They're more for picking off smaller units and for running up the flank. They're kind of running for interference. I used them on uh, War Machines, things like that, weaker War Machines, uh, to stop them from attacking for a turn. Uh, not the best unit, but again, they're really cheap interference. Uh, we have the Black Coach here going in the Medium Discs. Uh, this is uh, one of the elite units there. Uh, it is Cavalry, Fear, Impact 2, and it's while it's empowered, this disc gains one movement and flying. Uh, the backstory with the Black Coach is that it's carrying a vampire, and in the in the Mentors game, when you use, it, it soaks up magic throughout the game, uh, and it gains flying and scythes and all this crazy stuff. So I like that they kind of incorporate that in the game. It isn't the strongest. It's, it's got three attack, three counterattack, moves four. But if you can get it empowered, that's going to give it plus one on all that stuff, plus it's going to get flying and an additional movement. So this thing can be tough, you just kind of have to build around it a little bit. Uh, the Vargeist, a fairly new unit to the even to the Miniatures game. It's a monster, undead, flying, and frenzy. Uh, this disc cannot be flipped onto by a non-hero small enemy. It only has three attack, but it does have four counter attack, and it does have frenzy. So if you can pin a lot of smaller units, you can knock out quite a few in one turn. And the fact that it can't be hit by a non uh, uh, a non hero is really awesome. Get a couple of those, and we get the requisite Black Knights, the ever popular. Four, they're four attack strength, three counter attack. They're cavalry, undead, fear. They do three impacts, so that's pretty strong for cavalry, uh, for even medium discs. So that's really cool. They're very strong. You probably see eleven points, here, but you kind of get what you're paying for with there. Uh, and you have the Zombie Dragon, kind of a classic, really strong Vampire Counts Army uh, monster. It's monster, undead. Fear, flying, and mobile. Uh, five attack strength, five counter attack, and four toughness. And you can activate to deal d6 minus two physical to target disc within medium range and place an activation on that disc. So he's fairly strong. He's got a pretty good range attack. He's 14 points, which actually isn't the worst for a bigger unit. Uh, and he's got two wounds, so he's pretty cool. He moves three, uh, but the fact that he's mobile really helps quite a bit because he can kind of do his zombie breath onto somebody. Uh, but really guys, that is the expansion. That's a lot of stuff. I hope uh didn't bore you guys too much with it, but uh, there's a lot of stuff in this expansion. For, for $30, it's quite a bit. Uh, a lot of new uh, cards, which actually change up the game more than you think. Uh, I like the fact that they've included new stuff for the old factions, as well as these new like teasers for new factions almost, but the teasers still play really well and are really fun to use. Uh, a lot of new new rules that aren't really di difficult to learn. Poison, reanimate, stuff like that. It's army specific. It doesn't. Um, it's not imbalanced at all. It really feels like it belongs there from the beginning. So, uh, really, nothing bad to say about it, as far as I can tell. It's a really fun little expansion. Let me take you to my final thoughts, and uh, we'll give you a final rundown there. So, guys, that is Legions of Darkness. Uh, now, if you've gone back in the Wayback Machine, one of our first videos that I ever posted on the channel was a Warhammer battle report. And I used to be really into Warhammer. I still kind of am, although I haven't had a chance to play as often. I've gotten into other miniatures games since then. But my main army is Vampire Counts. I'm just a really big fan of Vampire Counts. I love the fluff. I love the magic. And they translate really well. Like every other army, the Vampire Counts play like they would in the tabletop game, if not even cooler. Because, as I've said before, the things in Discourse uh, are, seem to be more balanced. I think Fancy Flight really, I mean, they, they're always out trying to balance the things in their games, like uh, their LCGs and their miniatures games, things like that. They want to create a balanced play environment, and Discourse is no exception, and I really, I really applaud them for that. Uh, but the vampires are really cool. They play, you have to protect the magic users. They have really strong magic users, but you, they can die. So you have to protect them. Unfortunately, I'm still not amazing at doing that. Uh, it's interesting what they've done with these Skaven and Dark Elves. There's really not enough to field an entire army of either one of those, but you can do half of an army essentially for either of those. And they are pretty competent at what they do. I like the uh, unique abilities of each of those armies. And it really bodes well. It's kind of like a 
teaser for the future because I'm assuming now that we'll, now that we have two factions on the good side and on the bad side that are kind of not filled out yet that we'll get a starter in the future like a new starter or a new bigger expansion kind of like what the starter size was uh, with those new new factions and to fill those out a little bit more so that's really cool I also like that they're revisiting the older factions the chaos and orcs and goblins there's a ton of untapped potential there of units that they haven't used before and they have the opportunity now that they've shown that they will be going back and doing that, adding new units. Uh, that just opens up everything. Because now we have the Doom Diver, which is one of my favorite goblin units. I love the I love the whole suicide bomber aspect of those things. It's hilarious to me. They're just really strong one-shot, essentially. So I really like that. I think uh, overall this is a great expansion. Legion of Darkness, awesome, awesome expansion. Uh, new terrain was something I wasn't expecting. I think that's a cool little addition that we're going to keep getting new, uh, interesting, special rules on the terrain. So I'm really excited for what the future holds for this. Uh, awesome first expansion, or first two expansions. Uh, if you have a chance, uh, we will be posting a review for Hammer and Hold, which is the other expansion for Discourse that came out simultaneously to this. I'll throw a little annotation on here once that's posted. But this is like the good version of the bad side. So it's like the good and this is the bad. But they're really not super, they're not as expensive as the starter set. I think they're 30 bucks MSRP, uh, 20 bucks without. And there's enough in both of these uh, to where you don't have to buy two. Uh, while I said you don't have to buy two starters of the original, I ended up buying two starters just because I wanted to. But even on these, I actually would not recommend buying two because I think uh, that's going to be like a waste of money. <laughs> but uh, you can click on that annotation here. But Legion of Darkness, guys, awesome expansion. Definitely check that out. Uh, definitely worth your money if you're into this wars already. I think it's just going to get better from here because this is this is showing the way for some really cool stuff in the future. But guys, I hope you enjoyed that review. Uh, as always, check out our social media down in the description below. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, check out our board game links page. And we did start a Patreon pretty recently. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely check that out as well uh, other in a monetary way. But if not, thank you for watching, guys. I definitely appreciate it. And I'll see you next time in the game room.